strange those words are not mine they are uh, written in a book and I wanted to talk today about a bit what uh, is being said uh, in this book I haven't read the book myself my mother read it um, but she showed me uh, a quotation in the book and I uh, read the um, the story that went with that quotation and I thought that it was very interesting because um, it brought up a new uh, subject that I haven't thought about uh, before, and it isn't hasn't uh, really have to do anything with uh, Yaru or, Gya or Gyaru, but with um, the view of some Japanese on uh, white foreigners, and you know the the, the gaijin uh, who come uh, to Japan, and um, you know many of them uh, get a job, uh, be it part-time or full-time in uh, teaching English and for the first time ever I read that there were some negative thoughts about um, those foreigners from the Japanese uh, and it was the first time that I ever uh, heard or read that um, you know I think uh, I will read uh, the passage uh, from the book and then um, I will talk about it a bit after that um, I think that is the best option. Uh, the book is called Japan Land in Search of Wa by uh, Karen Muller. And it actually has a lot of um, negativity going around um, in terms of uh, Japanese things. Now, it doesn't, this doesn't mean that um, you know, she thinks negative of Japan, you know, she, she likes it very much. But for example, there's a passage in the book about arranged marriages. And, well, even though they are becoming more rare, they're still quite usual in Japan. And so they have these marriage agencies that, you know, go look for a suitable partner, you know, for you to marry. Uh, mostly people who are at around the age of 30 um, make use of these agencies because, you know, they need to get uh, married before they are 30 or some uh, women might think they have failed in life for not finding a partner before they are 30. Now, um, what this uh, marriage agency is looking for is if um, in uh, the family that you're interested in, if there are not uh, any handicapped children uh, being um, you know, uh, mentally handicapped or physically handicapped. And if there are, um, that family immediately gets uh, scrapped off the list. Um, which even, uh, and that doesn't really have to do anything with those agencies, but I um, uh, have talked to some Japanese uh, Japanese people and they told me that, you know, shame is also a big, big thing and some parents are so ashamed um, uh, when it comes down to uh, having a kid who has a physical handicap that um, uh, they don't talk about it in public and they don't take their kid out because they are so so ashamed of um, you know, them having a, a handicapped kid. And this does not of course mean that all Japanese do it. I've seen um, Japanese family who uh, took uh, a handicapped uh, kid with them and uh, I was glad that they did because uh, you know it's not it's no reason at all to, uh, to, to be ashamed of, of it and to uh, uh, never uh, take, it, uh, take the handicapped kid out. 
But that was not what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I will read the passage uh, uh, concerning the um, gaijin who come to Japan to teach English. Alright, here we go. Jerry, my new housemate, is tall and blonde, good looking and gay. He's an excellent dresser and could pass for half his age. He's employed by a private corporation, teaching English part-time to lonely, middle-aged housewives. That, er that earns him enough to live a college dorm lifestyle and keep him in cigarettes and beer. He's been in Japan for nearly five years and doesn't know if he's ever going back to the States. Gaijin men are popular, he tells me. And if you're going to be sexually active, Japan is relatively safe. He goes to work at dinner time and either stays out partying or brings someone home at 2 or 3 in the morning. He sleeps from mid-morning until late in the, into the afternoon. We so rarely see each other that we uh, communicate mostly um, via the dry erase board in the bathroom. Jerry is not alone in his lifestyle. Osaka is awash with foreigners, many of them scraping by part-time in the English teaching profession. Most seem to skitter across the surface of society, hanging out with fellow foreigners during their free time. Almost all are here on a two-year visas, though some extend to three. A few hang on for four or five or six more years until they gradually realize that their skills are no longer particularly marketable back at home. They are exempt from most of Japan's rules and obligations, provided that they at least pay lip service to societal conventions. They get paid for a little more than speaking a language they grew up with, and they rarely even have to prepare a lesson plan. But they are also looked down upon by the average Japanese. And here's the part where it gets interesting. I remember Genji's comment one evening at a dinner table. The English teachers that you send here, in your country, they're not good for anything more than pumping gas. It was unlike him to be so blunt, unless he thought he was stating the obvious. Surprisingly, Jerry agrees. Most of the teachers who make a life here are misfits, one way or the other. In Japan, just being a foreigner already sets you apart, so you can hide whatever else you want behind your gaijiness. And you always have a group that you belong to just because of how you look. Um, now before everyone you know, starts to um, this this book and his stories, um, this was actually also not her words, words of some Japanese uh, and that uh, foreign gay guy. Um, but uh, you have to read um, the next phrase because she ac actually counters that a little bit. But as I get to meet Osaka's English teachers, I start to question uh, his assessment. The gaijin that I meet are all in their own ways, making Herculean efforts to fit in. And then um, she uh, gives a few examples of uh, foreigners who have a steady life um, in Japan uh, and, uh, you know, being an uh, English teacher. Now, the reason why I, I uh, found this so interesting is because, you know, it is indeed true that so many foreigners who go to Japan uh, end up in uh, the English teaching business. And I was actually also planning to, um, you know, be active in uh, English teaching um, like for a part-time job. Now, um, that will be like private lessons or something because I'm not a native speaker. For some uh, jobs you have to be a native speaker. But if it's part-time, um, you know, German people, uh, Dutch people, you know, um, uh, French people, you know, many um, non-English uh, native speakers uh, can do those jobs. And, you know, I thought that was pre pretty, pretty normal. And, um, you know, of course, just, uh, you know, mentioning one or two people who think that, you know, doesn't mean that all Japanese uh, think, uh, uh, think alike. But it was interesting to me because it's, is that indeed the cliché uh, image that a lot of Japanese have towards uh, white foreigners? I mean, concerning Gyaru, many people have a very cliché image concerning Gyaru. So there must be also a cliché image towards, uh, you know, gaijin. And, for example, um, many white women uh, think that uh, white men who come to Japan are nothing more than nerds 
who cannot get laid in their own country and they want to go uh, to Japan um, uh, to get laid there because they can get women who are out of their league. And you know, I, I, that is, is I, I think that is a big problem. I only know one guy who fits that um, profile um, uh, because he was even so elitist that he wanted, um, you know, he wants a Japanese girlfriend and uh, you would think, oh, so he likes Asian women. No, no, no. If his girlfriend would be Korean or Chinese, it would not be good enough for him. He wants a Japanese uh, girlfriend. And he went to, uh, to Japan just to do that. Um, so, you know, concerning those cliché images, you know, there must be also a cliché image that Japanese have uh, for foreigners. And this was the first time that I ever heard something negative uh, about it. Now, you know, if you're a student, you know, you, you know, a student life, you, you have it tough, you know, you need to, scra uh, you know, scrape all the money you can. So, uh, you know, you do uh, jobs that you can find easily, um, you know, that uh, don't um, afford that mu uh, much of work so that you can spend more time on uh, studying, stuff like that. And... I really don't get how they got that whole picture of that they are useless back in their own country. Um, because when I look when I look at, at myself and my experience of meeting foreigners uh, in Japan who are um, active in the English teaching uh, industry, uh, many of them actually have like a passion, you know, to teach English or, or like to teach children. In, uh, at my university here in Holland, uh, there was a guy who wanted to become a teacher, you know, and, and he will probably uh, teach uh, either English to Japanese people or Japanese to Dutch people. So he fits that, uh, that category, category of a white foreigner who comes to Japan to teach English. However, uh, you know, in the book, it was stated that by Japanese that, you know, those people are nothing, you know, are, are worth nothing, are misfits. But that guy, you know, um, you know, uh, attended university, um, had the highest uh, high school uh, branch. We have a weird um, high schooling system here in Holland where you have three types, which one takes four years, um, the other takes five years, and the other takes six years. And to go to um, many universities, you have to have at least the six years uh, of schooling and you know he can be whatever he want uh, he, he could have been uh, a doctor but you know his passion was with teaching so um, he went to do that so I think that statement is really weird now concerning those kind of foreigners who are only getting there you know uh, just to have fun I met two guys in Osaka uh, I think they were from Australia they were uh, there on their working holiday visa and they taught English and they did not really like their job, but it was easy and they were capable to go out and party a lot, uh, you know, during the night. Um, so, you know, those, those people could fit that, um, that cliche image that the book was describing. But, you know, just partying, I mean, if, I, if I'm going there, when, when I go to Japan, um, you know, you can bet that I will also party like hell uh, when I'm there. So, um, you know, ju just that image of, whole, of partying foreigners is not something that should be considered negative because so many people uh, party um, regardless of what their, you know, occupation is. And, like I said, the whole, um, the reason for making this video, because, you know, it, it doesn't really have a point because it's only um, uh, given two examples, you know, that gay foreign guy uh, who, th who uh, confirms that cliche image, and a Japanese guy. But there are, are probably um, other Japanese who think like that. And it was the first time that that ever came up, that foreigners who teach English are, you know, looked at negatively. And, you know, it's probably not that many, I think, you know. Um, if, if, if I would go around uh, asking in my, uh, you know, to my Japanese friends, they would say that they don't care about it, even if they would, you know, they would be polite and say that they have no problem with foreigners who teach English. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure that, you know, they don't have any problem with that. So if you have any Japanese friends, you should ask them 
uh, what they think about foreigners who go to Japan and uh, teach English there. So that was my quick video about um, the foreigners who are um, concerned to be misfits in Japan. And I will see you guys next time. See ya.